Okay, uh, so we got a later model Cascadia here. It has a Gen 3 one box. The customer's having some issues. We actually cleaned the box a while back. Uh, he's been having issues with uh, conversion efficiency and having to do forced regens and uh, SCR tests to get it to reset and pass again. It does pass. So I actually brought it back to us. We, I was actually moving it across the lot to go ahead and start a forced regen and follow on with the SCR conversion efficiency test. And as soon as I started the truck, even cold, I know I smelt coolant uh, pretty strong, like burning. So got out of the truck over on the other side, which I wish I should have started over there. I'll show you. I noticed something was wet right down here on the uh, seventh injector. It's coolant, and then kind of followed the trail up. We got coolant here, then it's actually dripping right here. So first thing I did. Took this little bellows or 180 pipe as I like to call it that comes from the exhaust manifold and goes up to the GR cooler. Sometimes these would be wet as well if it's leaking significantly because it will fill the cooler and actually sometimes you can see them leaking down here on the turbo because it just runs back through everything. They can be so bad if they go completely. Uh, so I didn't see anything over there so immediately uh, after that went over on the other side of the engine. What was that? A minute ago. and we pulled the uh, hot tube off. So we've had a rash of these lately, where actually they've came from a dealer or wherever, and it's all oh, no, nothing's wrong with it. And this one actually, I could see where somebody had taken, taken it loose. So right up here, past the uh, Venturi, coming from the EGR cooler, I mean, that's coolant right there. Up here in the intake, it's all wet. It's really built up. Um, and there's this coolant just laying in there. So we know we have a bad EGR cooler, uh, which is significant because it can cause downstream problems with that glycol uh, burning and uh, the residue from that can actually degrade the, your DOCs uh, and your SCR and you can have these problems where the truck won't regen properly and it won't convert nitrous oxide efficiently to where it needs to be for emission standards and it derates the truck and causes all those problems. So this is why when you're coming into a shop, if you've been using coolant, you need to let them know right off the bat, because that is, you've got to fix this problem first before you even waste any money on that, because it could be a total loss once it gets to a certain point. So that's why we, here at our shop, we always ask these questions when a truck comes in with these problems. We want to get all the history and, uh, you know, and, and like a detective, figure out what's going on and why these problems are, are happening. So that's pretty much all I got for today, guys. Um, so like I said, if you're having these issues, check that stuff out. And furthermore, if you are having these types of issues and you can't make it out to us, uh, if you're at another shop or if you're a do-it-yourselfer, check out our website. We are now a full-line Dynex dealer, uh, Road Warrior. We carry the Redline products. I'm also PDI, uh, jaw test software, if you can get your own diagnostic software. So check out our website. The link's in the description below. Pretty good pricing, and we'll do the best we can to help you out even if we don't help service you here at our shop. And lastly, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, uh, hit the thumbs up button, like the video. Um, hit the bell for the updates.